We know that Valve is putting a lot into pushing Linux gaming. They want this time to actually succeed, unlike the first time. The first time being the Steam Machines, that went... Well, we know how that went. The second time being Proton, Proton's going pretty good. And the third time is now with the Steam Deck. But have you ever wondered how much they actually care? Well, The Verge recently conducted an interview with two of the Steam Deck designers, Lawrence Young and Pierre-Luc Griffiths. If you saw any of the early Steam Deck interviews, you probably heard something from them. Among various other things that I'm not going to talk about here, but I might talk about on the podcast, they mentioned this. While Valve's own 20-30 person hardware team spent two years designing the actual gadget in-house and it pulled in other parts of the company too, Griffiths says the company is also directly paying more than 100 open source developers to directly work on the Proton compatibility layer, the Mesa graphics driver, and Vulkan, among other tasks like Steam for Linux and Chromebooks. Now you can easily make the argument that Valve doesn't really care about FOSS. They are only doing this out of their best interest. They're afraid of what Microsoft is doing and want a contingency plan and want their own hardware product that they can sell games to people on. And maybe at some levels of the company, that is probably true. I'm sure that some people in the marketing team don't really care. But the end result is a better Linux desktop experience for everyone, not just people on the Steam Deck. Unlike what you'd normally expect from a corporate interest in something like Linux, they aren't just funding things that solely help them. A great example of this is DXVK. This started as a project just done by a community member. This was started by Philip Rebol, and then over time it got better, and he got hired by Valve to work on the project alongside Joshua Ashton, who brought in the DX9 support. And I, as a desktop Linux user, experience any optimization improvement, any better game support. It doesn't matter what I'm using, I experience all of these benefits. And when he says working on Proton, obviously part of that means working directly on the Proton project itself. There are definitely paid employees that are working on this, but that's not the only thing he means. He also means working on the utilities involved in Proton, like Wine, for example. So Proton wasn't just made by Valve, it was actually made as a partnership between Valve and Code Weavers. Code Weavers are the primary sponsor of Wine, and the CTO of Code Weavers, Alexander Juilliard, is also the project leader of Wine. So effectively, Code Weavers are the owner of the project. And there have been some occasions where developers employed by Code Weavers have been contracted by Valve to work on something involving Wine, involving Proton, because as Wine gets better, so does Proton. Proton is basically just a collection of tools to make it better for the gaming use case. Without Wine being good, Proton is useless. But it's not just Wine and Code Weavers that Valve has directly funded. They've also funded certain pieces of kernel development. Now, primarily this work is done through Collabora. And two of the major additions were a thing called Futex2 and Syscall User Redirection. I believe I've done videos on both of these topics, but if I did, it would have been a while ago. So Futex2 is for use with low-level locking libraries. When you have a multi-threaded situation, there's a lot of cases where you don't want to have things accessing the same resource. But if you have a thread that is waiting on a lock, traditionally, it could only wait on a single lock. Whereas Futex2 allows that thread to wait on multiple resources at once. This is more in line with the way that threading can work on Windows with the wait on multiple function. And as most games are designed for Windows, a lot of games expect this to be the way that threading works. Without it being there, in certain situations, you can see a performance detriment. Now, as for syscall user redirection, this is incredibly important for certain games. So, a lot of games will use these DRM systems, these anti-cheat systems, 
that are basically rootkits. Now, these work through the Windows API, but Linux doesn't have the Windows API. So if you send these things to the kernel, the kernel's like, I don't know what this is, and it doesn't do anything with it, and the game doesn't run. Whereas with syscall user redirection, it will then redirect those calls into the user space, allowing things like Wine to deal with them. This is a really big part of the reason why certain games that weren't playable for a very long time are perfectly playable now. There was nothing else wrong with them besides needing to redirect these calls. Now, all of these things so far, while they might have some utility outside of gaming, are primarily there because of gaming, but they're also working on something that's not really related, and that's working on KDE. For quite a while now, they have been working with Blue Systems. Blue Systems is one of the major patrons of KDE, and a lot of their employees work on the KDE project, and not just in, you know, random developer positions. One of the board members of the KDE EV, Nate Graham, works for Blue Systems. And like anybody else involved in KDE, Blue Systems are going to be working on basically anything that needs to be done, whether that's on the Exorg side, the Wayland side, or anything else in between. Now, anything that Valve is going to be funding is likely going to be involved in benefiting the user experience using the Steam Deck. But the Steam Deck is just running a regular version of KDE. So anything involved in improving the Steam Deck experience is improving the KDE experience is improving the general desktop experience. And I think that's just good for everyone. Now, most of the rest of this article is just general Steam Deck questions, most of which I'm not going to talk about here. But there is one bit I do want to talk about. Valve on multiple multiple occasions has said they want to do a multi-generational product. The Steam Deck isn't just going to be a one-off thing, there'll be a Steam Deck, a Steam Deck 2, and hopefully if it goes well, a Steam Deck 3. But, you know, Valve doesn't like the number 3, haha, ha, 3 joke, you know the thing. And the designers here have some things they do want to address, that being the screen and the battery life. But those aren't things we need a whole new generation of Steam Deck. So this interviewer asked, what about a Steam Deck Pro? And they weren't exactly a big fan of that idea. Right now, the fact that all Steam Decks can play the same games and that we have one target for users to understand what kind of performance level to expect when you're playing and for developers to understand what to target, there's a lot of value in having that one spec. I think we'll opt to keep one performance level for a bit longer and only look at changing the performance level when there is a significant gain to be had. And I think that's probably the best way to handle it. If you start releasing, you know, multiple Steam Decks in the same generation, basically you've just made a computer but now it's in this little handheld format. Whereas what they seem to be going for is more of this console-like experience, but not a lockdown console. And getting games to run on Linux can already be a bit of a challenge. If you start throwing in multiple hardware SKUs and all this other modifications, basically you're just creating a problem. There are also rumours that Valve has sold a million units. Now, this is just a rumour. Valve has not fully confirmed anything. There is this ex-Valve employee that said the cake is not a lie, and on the cake there is a picture that says one million on it. But whether that actually means a million units have been sold or not is hard to say. Either way, let me buy a Steam Deck Valve. Just, just start selling them in Australia, please. Just any point in time now that would be great you do that but um yeah valve is doing a lot to improve the state of the linux desktop and especially linux gaming but the effect they're having doesn't just affect the product they are trying to sell it affects everybody else out there as well even people on just a regular distro. But let me know your thoughts down below. Do you care at all about the work that Valve is doing? Do you care about Linux gaming? Do you have no idea why you're watching this video? I would love to know. So if you like the video, I'm gonna go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and the Barrow Pay linked in the description down below. Yeah, that one. 
I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody on Games. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.